Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial in Adobe After Effects. Today Ace will be showing you how to use 3D Stroke. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can join the Discord server and become a patron using the links below. Thanks for watching and hope y'all have a great day. Hey guys, Ace here. And today we're going to be going over a couple creative ways that you can use strokes in your videos. Uh, right now you are seeing 3D Stroke, which is a external plugin from Trapcode Suite. And this one is actually my favorite. Um, you can do it without 3D Stroke. You can use the built-in stroke effect in After Effects, but um, Trapcode obviously just makes everything so much easier and I'm going to be using that and I'll show you a couple methods without um, 3D Stroke as well. So I'm going to show you these other examples I created and I'll show you how I do them. So this first one that we're going to be doing is probably my favorite out of the bunch because you can be so creative with it. I just love how the curved lines end up looking and I'll show you um, all my tips and tricks on how to use that. Um, this next one is the um, a kind of like a halo. I'm going to play this. Um, also turn, put it through a repeater so it kind of, you know, uh, duplicates and then almost looks like a teleporter from, I don't know, like Star Trek or something. <laughs> and then um, next we have this brush stroke. Now this one's a little bit different than the rest because I added another effect called S Auto Paint and this is from the uh, Sapphire Suite and um, basically what it does, it makes the stroke, it turns it into like a paintbrush type of stroke and you can also animate it as well and I'll show you that and another method you can use to do something kind of similar as well. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next one and next we have the, um, the stroke animation which kind of reveals text. Let me play this through. So there we go, it basically writes the text out and um, it's not a neat little effect to use if you're trying to do something like that. And then lastly I have this new one I kind of created, it's just a little like wipe of a stroke that's kind of revealing and then wiping back over a scene. Just grabbed a random scene on the internet and did that on there. So I try to do each one of these and they're really not that too complicated. You'll get plenty of ideas on your own after you see how I do them. And um, yeah, let's go and hop into the first one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a solid for our background, and I'll show you what I do to do that. I hit the uh, shortcut Control y and that'll let us create a solid, and I'm going to just make it like a, uh, like a dark gray, somewhere around there. That's fine, and then go ahead and click OK. And then what I do after that is I actually lock the uh, layer. Uh, well, hold on, actually don't lock it yet. Let me press F4 so I can reveal this tool right here, because this is the uh, Shy tool. If you look at this little... I don't know, ghost or key looking thing. If you press that in, you see like the head pops in a little bit and then you press this button right here and it'll shy that layer so you can't you can't mess with it. And then and then you can lock it and go ahead and shy it again. So now it's not shown in, under the list and you can't move it around by accident. So it's basically a ghosted layer. It's a background color that you want. I'm just using gray because that's what I'm using. But anyway, all right, next step is to create a solid for our stroke. So I'm just going to hit control Y again. And the color doesn't matter, but I'm just going to make it white just because it does not matter. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw a stroke. So I press G to uh, select the pencil up here. And then I'm just going to draw, you know, just a random stroke. And I'm only going to use two vertices. Um, You'll kind of see that when you do it on your own, why you'd only, only want to use two. I mean, you don't have to, but I think it looks a lot smoother that way because the way After Effects handles um, masks, it's really not done that well if you use a bunch of vertices. You'll see what I mean when you, when you mess with it. But anyway, all right, so after that, I'm just go ahead and add 3D stroke. Enter. And all right, so now we have a stroke on the screen and nothing's happening. <laughs> so basically from here, I'm just going to... Um, animate the start end and show you what happens after that. So if you see these values right here, you have the start of the stroke and end and you animate that and it um, basically draws the line across the uh, the path. So I'm going to start as I'm going to go to the beginning of our composition, start a keyframe at zero for the end value. I'm going to press U to bring up that keyframe and go about uh, maybe this far. It doesn't really matter. It's like um, how many seconds am I in? It's like three seconds into my footage here, and then I'm gonna go all the way to 100%. And then now let's look at what we have right here. Let me play this. So the stroke draws along, but it doesn't disappear as well. So we need to animate the start as well. So for the start, I'm gonna go back. So this is at three seconds in. I'm gonna go back to about two seconds. So a whole second back. I'm going to press a keyframe right here for the start value. I'm gonna tap U again to bring up that keyframe. And then I'm going to go further down past our um, our end keyframe, and maybe it's a whole nother second. I'm going to go 
So four seconds in, and I'm gonna go all the way up to 100% here. So now let's play this. So now we have that. And as you play with this, you'll notice how the, um, the distance between these uh, animations will dictate how long the line is. So if I just move one of these across, you see that if, if the start value takes longer to animate, the line will be on there longer. And then you can you know adjust this to your liking. And another thing you can do is put all these keyframes into a um, Betsier and go to the uh, graph editor and you can you know change the speed of these. I usually use the speed graph because it's a lot better for me. So I usually take the first Oops. So let's so let's select the end value first. I'm going to take this handle. I'm in the speed graph, by the way, and then um, just pull this to the left, as far left as it can go, and then here, just about there. And this is all in your taste. So I'm just going to show you what I do. I'll play with these these values until I get what I like. So something like that. And let's play this. I think it's a little too slow. And if you want to move your keyframes closer together without moving each individual one like that, you can select all your keyframes like this and then hold alt and click and drag and all the keyframes will kind of shrink together. Um, so let's just do that. You know, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm, already, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. That's really slow, but um, I'm going to maybe move them a little closer together, but I'm just going to go move on so you can see how this is done. Um, so next thing I would do is you notice how the stroke is it's animated how we want, but the shape is not correct. We need the ends to be thinner than the middle. So that is called a taper. And that value is right here. You hit the drop down arrow for taper and enable it. And let's see what happens. Oh, I missed the button. There we go. So now it's enabled and we have a thin beginning, a thick middle and a thin ending. So perfect, that's what we want. Um, after that, I'm just going to go ahead and, and colorize this and I'm gonna change the set color from solid color to over path and so I can see this color a little bit better I'm going to turn off the mask line and to do that you see this little highlighted button right here you just click that and that line that you drew for the mask it will disappear so I'm gonna go um, I'm gonna change the oops I'm gonna go to color ramp right here this drop down arrow change the preset I'm just gonna pick one and then I'm gonna adjust it from there so uh, let's just do a three color so if you click a little uh, tip for this. So if you just click somewhere on here, it will create a swatch and you can um, add another color there. Let me pull some of these off. Just click and drag down and you can pull them off. I only need three swatches right now. So so for the first color, I'm just gonna go from a uh, light blue to a, it's maybe a purple. Ooh, that's not purple. This is purple to a red. Looks like pinkish red maybe. All right, something like that. Okay, so now we have that line. It's not too bad. So it's a simple little line. And then from here, um, what you could do is you can add a repeater. So let me close the uh, taper tab and go down to repeater and enable that. And I keep missing the buttons. There we go. All right, and by default, the repeater has the Z displace on by 30. And I'm just gonna leave it on that for now. If you want you know, to adjust this, do what you like to do. You can change the number of instances with this value right here. So this will change the number of strokes on the screen, how many times it's repeated, I mean. So increasing this will increase the number of strokes. So I'm just gonna put this value on seven for now, I think that's fine. You know, I think I'm going to just extend this mask a little bit so we get uh, more of these kind of on the screen. I, you know, I'm just trying to show you um, the basics here, how to use this, but um, you know, if you wanna do something like this, I don't know, just play with it and you might get some really, really cool effects. So as you can see, it really doesn't take much to get something really creative going and it keeps ideas just coming. So uh, next I'm going to lower the thickness just because I like the lines usually pretty thin, usually around like two pixels or something like that. Um, maybe I'll cr increase the instances up to like 12. So next let's go to the transform tab and I'll show you how you can do some really creative things with that as well. Um, so let me uh, open that, that drop down arrow and then you can change the um, kind of like the whole world position. So if you rotate it on along the X axis, you can see it's spinning upwards. And if you can imagine what's happening, if you can imagine like this plane is, you know, kind of flipping up towards it if you, if, or behind us if you do it like this, you know what I'm saying? So you can do a Y rotation and kind of get like a, a, face, a face value of it like animating towards you like that. You know, infinite amount of, amount of ideas here. So 
have fun with that and the last thing i would do with the stroke is i would probably add a glow not probably almost always add a glow so i'm gonna use my favorite which is fl glow um that's actually a plug-in um the uh, built-in glow and after effects also works pretty well but i really like this one so i'm gonna use that and i'm gonna change the um where is it the uh, blending mode to add uh, addition and then change the radius up a little bit and the amount so there we go and play this through and there we go just like that we have the basics of 30 stroke down it's really not that complicated but you can get some really really complex looking scenes done with just this one effect so let's uh, move on to the next one all right, so I went and created a new layer. I'm just going to call it, we call this Halo, and I added 3D Stroke. This is the default. It's reset. This is all default settings. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a new mask. And for this one, I'm going to go up here to our Ellipse tool. And if you want, if you have the rectangle tool selected, just click and hold, and you can get to the um, the other shapes here. And I'm just going to create, you know, just ellipse like that, and it'll automatically draw it for you as long as the um, 3D Stroke effect is on and also have uh where is it use all paths you can have this checked um if that's not checked you actually have to select which path i mean up to you how you want to do that there's you can also be creative with that too anyway um so this one's obviously very simple if you want to create a disc shape you want to an ellipse and then you can just animate the um start end that's basically all i did there let me um show you how i did the repeater as well because maybe you guys want to see that um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So let me um, animate the end keyframe there. Um, so we're gonna start, actually put that down there. All right, so we're starting at zero, goes to 100. And then at this keyframe, this is at two seconds, um, I went into the repeater and enabled the repeater. And this time I turned off the Z displays because we only want the uh, Y displays, which is like this. Um, so as you can see, you're just gonna animate this value. Um, press U to bring up, oop. There we go. Press U to bring up all the keyframes, and then we'll go down some frames here. And um, where is it? There it is. The Y displays up. I don't know about there. Um, it's all in your taste, though. Um, you go down the thickness down to like five, and then I'm going to you know just put these in the graph editor as always. So it's gonna animate a nice like natural looking speed like that and then I'm going to animate the I guess it doesn't really matter but I'm gonna do the start go ahead and press F9 and then oops wrong way there we go and the graph editor let's speed this way okay Yeah, I might adjust some of these keyframes, but yeah, like this is just uh, something to spur some creativity in you. And the same thing, I would just add an FL Glow because FL Glow looks so good on strokes. Like that, you know, additive. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Since it's white, it doesn't matter if it's screen or additive. It shouldn't really matter. Um, yeah, if you want, you can change the colors. You can do, uh, you can actually do um, to where it, the colors are set over the X. So like if you want the colors not along the stroke, so let me show you the difference. So if it's over X, it's gonna go from left to right, because that's the X axis. But if you put it on over path, it'll you know go from the beginning to the end of the stroke. See what I'm saying? So, um, or you can do over Y, you know, whatever whatever you float your boat, honestly. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to that one. All right, now I've went and duplicated my layer, reset my 3D stroke, and we're gonna do the brush stroke next, which has the um, kind of painted on look on so let's go ahead and just draw a random stroke doesn't really matter just whatever <laughs> okay and from here i'm just going to go ahead and animate the end value i'm going to go ahead and press the stopwatch press u to bring up the keyframes and i'm going to change it from 0 to 100 so 0 to 100 it's going to go across like that and then i'm going to go here change the start press u and then 0 to 100 okay and so we have this and from here, I'm just going to go ahead and add the S auto paint. And so you can see what's going to happen when this is placed on there. So let me turn off our uh, masking lines and we put on, change this back to default. There we go. We put on uh, S underscore auto paint. Okay. And by default, it does this. So let's play this and I'll show you what happens.
And as you can see, now it looks like our line is being painted on as if someone actually had a paintbrush and they're just slapping it onto, onto the screen. And in Auto Paint, we have all these other settings. So let me go to this frame about here so we can see all of this. And then um, you can change the uh, frequency, which is like the number of strokes that are on the um, on the lines. So increasing that will increase the number of strokes. And once you get the frequency on, on a number that you like, um, you can go down to this value called Jira Frames. And I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna do a before and after so you can see the difference. So let me play this again. And I want you to notice exactly what's happening when it's painted on. Notice how the stroke is not actually moving after it's painted on. So it's it's being painted and then all of these are kind of like set in, t in stone. So if you want something like that, it's perfect. Um, if not, you can change this value right here to one or two, I think is pretty good. And then now let me play this through and it will animate the entire time. Okay. And that's pretty much it. You can um kind of adjust all these different settings. You can change the smooth colors up and this will kind of like kind of kind of fray it, I guess is the right word to say. It almost looks like it's like fractaling and when you play it through it's going to give it a different look. There's also uh different styles in here if you want to try a different style. You can uh go in here and change it to a hairy paint, which I don't I don't typically use these other ones, but um, you know, if it's all up to you and what you want to use. I always keep it on Van Gogh because Van Gogh looks really natural and I think it looks really nice. Okay, now another thing you can add to a 3D stroke to get something kind of similar to this, not quite as complex though, is um, to add a roughen edges. So let me turn off uh, auto paint. I'm going to add a roughen edges. Uh, there we go. Okay, so then you can change the uh, border, which let me zoom in a little bit. Um, Changing this value will basically tell you, it basically decides how thick, um, uh, I guess you could say like the peaks and valleys are, how how um, how far the peaks and valleys of your stroke are gonna be. Um, I actually just moved it, there we go. Um, then the sharpness of those edges, you can change that with this value here, the edge sharpness, then fractal influence is, you know, how much the, um, it's using basically a fractal noise to create this um, type of shape here. And this value is how much of that fractal is actually affecting the stroke itself. So uh, I usually keep that on one. And then the scale. So this part is pretty important. Um, increasing the scale will basically make the, um, as you can see, it makes the um, fractal larger. So in decreasing this will make you give you a lot of tiny little, um, almost to give you a chalk looking effect if you make this really small. And if you make it really large, it you know looks kind of like um, a really thick paint that you kind of slapped on there. And so if you wanted to animate this um, stroke kind of the same way Auto Paint did with the jitter frames, you have to go down to Evolution Options here and Alt click the random seed and add an expression. So I'm just going to add time, times. So let's do 50. Try 50. See how that works out. And let's play this through. Might be a little bit too fast there. Yeah, it's, that's way too fast. I'm going to lower it to like 10. Okay. And I'll probably adjust the scale, but you, you get the point. You can, you can change, you can get all kinds of different effects just by changing these values right here. So let me lower the scale to get a different type of stroke. So. So that's the effect there, and obviously you can change the color on 30 stroke and do all sorts of things with this. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to it. Let's uh, go on and hop on to the next. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how to use a stroke to reveal text or kind of write the text on. And to start off, we're just going to go ahead and create a text layer by pressing Control, Alt, Shift, and T. Um, or you can right click and create a um, new text, whichever way works for you. Right, I'm going to double click here and I'm just going to type in uh, Biloxi because that is the name of the font that I'm going to be using. Um, let me scale this up because you cannot see it at all. Okay, so it's pretty simple. All you do is um, I'm going to center this. I'm going to uh, draw a mask over the text like so. Just press G to use the pen tool and I'm just going to do like this. So start at the beginning and um, you want your stroke to be it's close to the center of the of the um, the text itself. So like you don't want it off to the edge because when we write it on, you'll see what I mean when um, it'll kind of like not cover the entire layer. So 
I'm gonna go right to the center of all this and I'm gonna fast forward so you guys don't have to watch this whole thing, but um, do this yourself and then follow along once we um, get back. All right, now that I got my mask drawn out, I'm gonna go ahead and add the effect stroke onto the layer. Um, if I could spell, there we go. And then um, drag that on, okay? And then when you drag onto the effect stroke, um, let me turn off the lines here so you can see this. It's going to draw the, uh, along the entire mask I created. That's obviously not what we want here. So let me turn this back on. And then I'm going to change the um, paint style from original image to on to, to reveal original image. So that's what we want. And um, you can see what it's gonna look like in the end right here. So uh, if we turn all this on and off, you see that we're losing a lot of the thickness from the line. So all you do is increase the brush stroke size here. Like so. Okay, that should be good. And um, I'm going to also kind of do a preview of the animation by changing this uh, end value so we can see how it's going to draw on like that. That looks pretty good. Uh, there it is. So it'll be like that. And all you do is keyframe that value and that's all there is to it. So F9, tab U. This is, and that's it. That's a little slow, but you get the point. And you notice how when it's drawing on, you kind of get a little bit of this other stroke that's showing up, you know, because there's, let me turn this off, this line coming through here is kind of being revealed while this one is being drawn. So in order to fix that, all I do is in decrease the brush stroke size a little bit so it's not as noticeable. Um, yeah, but it all depends on how well you drew the mask and the type of font that you're using on how well it's going to turn out. It's never really going to be perfect, but that's not something that anybody's really going to notice in a video. So there you have it. And lastly, what we're going to do is the uh, reveal stroke is kind of a method that I created myself. Uh, so I'm going to import my footage that I pulled offline, uh, just some random stock footage of one of my favorite cars here. It's the uh, Nissan GTR. So let me just scale this up to actually fit in the video. Okay. All right. For this effect, what we're going to do is we're going to create a solid with control Y and then doesn't matter what it's named. Add the solid, I'm going to shorten it to where it's only over the clip here. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a mask. I'm going to tap G. I'm just going to do a mask that's kind of like really zigzag, just a bunch of random horizontal lines going like this, right? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything specific, just you know, horizontal lines going across the screen. And make sure they're going all the way off like this. Don't be like here because they'll, they won't be going all the way across. So now I'm going to add the uh, stroke effect, add that on. And I'm gonna change it to reveal original image. So now we have these, we turn this off. So now we have these lines going across and um, we need to increase the brush stroke size so that the image is no longer visible. So keep going, keep going, keep going until you can't see the background anymore. And you notice how these edges are kind of uh, feathered a little bit. You can, uh, you can change that with the brush uh, hardness right here. Increasing that will make it uh, more firm. So we're also going to add a, um, let me keep going with the size first. We're also going to add a rough and edges just to give it more style. Oops. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to go type in rough and edges right there. Press enter and adds that. So now I'm going to keyframe the end value from 100%. We tap U to bring up the keyframes to 0% like that. So we have this and I'm going to adjust the rough and edges um, value a little bit. I'm going to turn this border up. So we have more edges to work with and the complexity up to, let's go up to seven. And then let's change the um, scale up as well. So it kind of more, looks more like teared paper or something. You know, it all depends on the, what your cover look you're looking for. But one thing I do want to note is that with the effect rough and edges, it will not, whoops, it will not actually meet the edges of the uh, composition, which is something um, what I do to fix that, honestly, just scale up the whole thing. Um, it's the only fix that I know of right now, so I just um, hit S, or you hit Shift S if you want to add the um, that value if you want to see it as well as the one you had before. Let me show you an example. So if you press S, 
it will show up just skill. But if you wanted to see your keyframe as well as skill, hold shift and press S and it'll add it to the um, list. Anyway, um, so now I'm just going to scale it up a little bit so that those edges are not being shown. And then we have our desired effect. And then you can do the same way backwards. You can keyframe it again and go the other way if you want it to wipe away as well. And there we go. But yeah, if you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like down below and don't forget to subscribe. And leave a comment down below if there's something that you want me to go over and I'll go ahead and cover that next. Um, but I'll see you guys next time.